Please welcome back Bill Staples. How's it going? Everybody get a stretch? Yeah, some snacks. Are you enjoying this, the show so far? Yeah. Woo! Good to hear it. Well, we've been talking all morning about developers and developer experiences. But, of course, we love operators just as much. And we've been building out some fantastic operational experiences inside New Relic. And so it's time to shift our focus to that phase of the software lifecycle and the engineers who spend their day doing those kinds of tasks. And I am excited to bring Jemiah on stage to show a whole load of innovation and some new announcements to boot. Hey, Jemiah. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, FutureStack. I am so excited to speak with you today and showcase the future of software operations. Over the last few years, we've accelerated beyond APM to ship industry-leading experiences in infrastructure monitoring, Kubernetes and Pixie, network monitoring, service levels, serverless, ML ops, and more. All this was built in-house with one single purpose, to deliver magical experiences that redefine the way that you all operate your software systems. And I'm thrilled to announce that operators love New Relic. In fact, they love it so much that the telemetry that you're processing has grown by four times. And we, we appreciate all the love, but we think we can do more to deliver more magic. And we continue to talk to you and listen to your feedback, and we hear three key problems. Teams continue to be reactive to incidents, and they want to move from being reactive to active to proactive. Teams continue to switch between siloed experiences in New Relic and using siloed tools outside of New Relic, and they want everything in one place. And last, teams hate seeing repeat incidents. They want to take action to close those OODA loops and prevent the same things from happening. The good news is, is that we heard you, and we've been working hard at these tasks. To help you to go from being reactive to proactive, we're going to help you manage your system health by using SLIs, which map to your business outcomes and horizontal platform experiences. We're going to help you do cohesive analysis to analyze the full stack, telemetry, and context all in one cohesive platform. And if we're continuous improvement, we'll help you close those OODA loops by deploying intelligent alerts that codify your incidents and prevent similar things from happening in the future. Let's actually see what that looks like with a demo. All right, so let's say I am the lead SRE at a cellular company. I think it may be called uh, Runelic or something like that. And recently in my team channel, I was alerted that after a launch of a new flagship device, there's some degradation in our, tra there's some degradation in our front end services due to a spike in traffic. Luckily, I've created a workload that's going to group all of the entities that are delivering this functionality to our customers. So I'm going to start here. And I can instantly see that it's definitely something going on with the health of my services. But I want to see what this is doing with regards to like, business impacts as well. So I'm going to take a look at my service levels to see if it's actually impacting my customers in real time. So our service level is going to allow you to manage all of your SLIs and see how they're going against your SLOs in real time. And I can see that there's definitely starting to be some degradation here that I don't want to impact my customers. And so I want to avoid a SEV1 event from happening. But since there are multiple entities working together to deliver this functionality, I want to get a view of my entire stack. So I'm going to go and take a look at our OmniMap. OmniMap is a brand new view. So this is the first time anyone's seeing this OmniMap view where I can see my entire stack on one screen. Looking at my OmniMap view, I can see that my network tier is doing pretty well. Hovering over the pods, I can get some details around uh, the teams that are managing them, which channels I may want to reach out to. Some of my infrastructure tier looks OK, but uh, I can see there's something going on with regards to my Kubernetes clusters and also the applications that depend on them. When I got my alert from my team channel, it mentioned my front end service. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And I can actually see that my front end is in an error state. Selecting my front end, it's going to bring me up to a local map view. But I actually want to dive in a bit deeper and see what's going on with regards to the cluster that this is relying on. So I'm going to go into my APM view. 
But one of the recent changes we've made to better support your infrastructure tier uh, is now you can actually see your Kubernetes data mapped with your APM data as well. So quickly coming into this view, I can scroll and see how those two data sources relate to each other, but I actually noticed something. I have a desired state of five pods and I only have three pods running currently, right? And that shouldn't be happening. So I'm gonna take a look at this deployment. Going directly from APM into the Kubernetes deployment, I can see that I need to work with my Kubernetes team to make sure that uh, our pods become available. Since they exist, they're just not working. But I'm also gonna make an alert. So if this happens again, I'll be quickly alerted and I can address this uh, a lot faster in the future. So without going into any other navigation features, I'm gonna go right in here and create an alert condition. For any time I have a uh, unavailable pod, it's gonna let me know that I need to come in and make some changes. And I wanna get this alert for anything longer than three minutes, adding it to my existing alert policy. So within the matter of minutes, I've been able to go from a notification in Slack to coming in and using the horizontal experience in our platform to figure out what's going on and then find the team that I need to work with. So I hope you can see that we're committed to helping, you, we're committed to delivering you with the industry best experiencing experiences in the way that you operate your systems at scale. We want to help you go from being reactive to proactive in the actions that you take using things like service levels and uh, using the platform in a horizontal manner. We're going to help you reduce your mean time to isolate, triage, and resolve with things like OmniMap, giving you a full view of your entire stack, and continuously help you improve your alerts. But none of this matters if you don't get hands-on, so I, I, I I would insist that today you go and check out our demo station for Ollie and Prod in the flow. Uh, check out more than our 25 breakout sessions. We have a track completely dedicated to observability and production. And to get hands on with the platform, try Infra, try Network, try Kubernetes, and more. I'm super excited to invite to the stage Robby from Verizon. It's going to talk about how Verizon is using New Relic to take software operations to a new level. Welcome out, Robbie. Hey, everyone. It's great to be here. My name is Robbie Belson, and I have the pleasure of leading Verizon's developer relations and experience efforts. Jemaya just talked to us a little bit more about how you can drive observability in complex software environments. But today, I want to take that one step further and discuss what we believe to be the next frontier of application development. That's right, 5G and edge computing. I think it's fair to say that when you think about the speeds of 5G, you think about that of a blink of an eye. But today, to showcase the universal impact of this technology, I want to provide an example that, simply put, has seemingly nothing to do with low latency. So we're not going to talk today about virtual reality, flying drones, ground robotics. We're gonna talk about golf. Now, for those of you who are golfers, you know that since the 1700s, it's been a source of pure relaxation, offering, rather, often untethering us from the digital world that we live and breathe. Yet, with the advent of on-screen entertainment systems, little tablets that sit within the golf carts themselves, we're often seeing that there is a digital experience now. And one of those digital experiences today are one of our customers in Edison Interactive. And for those of you less familiar with these golf systems, Edison Interactive is one of the largest on-screen experiences supporting Club Car, which houses one of the largest fleets of golf carts today in the US. And what these tablets do, it's not just yardage, so how far am I from the hole? It's not just weather, sports score, stock prices. You can even order a hamburger and fries from one tap in your, in your tablet. This is a premium experience. And as a result of this premium experience, they have faced a real challenge and had to do with latency. Because if you think about all of these API calls powering these experiences, that's almost 2 billion API calls each and every month. So we wanted to ask ourselves, for each of those calls, could we drive down the latency? And on top of that, future-proof their architecture because they were driving towards a world of what they called digital caddies, really seamlessly interacting with your golf cart, 
to have a more immersive experience, make suggestions about your swing and beyond. So, like anyone, we started with the architecture. How was this application actually being delivered? And we found that all of the data was in one single location. So if I happen to be playing golf in our nation's capital, I have a great experience. But if I was all the way on the other coast, I wasn't so lucky. So we used Verizon 5G Edge, which is our mobile edge computing platform delivering low latency in 17 locations today. We bring the power of compute and storage within AWS to more locations than ever. So that took care of the compute, right? But what about the data? We teamed up with one of the leaders in distributed database technology in HarperDB to address this exact challenge. What they do is really, really cool. What they've done is using custom functions, they collapse the application stack, bringing data closer to each of the golf carts and end users. What that meant for you, and the developers rather, simplicity without sacrifice. So now we think we have a more performant experience, but how do we measure the outcomes? Well, we use New Relic across a four-pronged approach, network, compute, device, and application. On the compute side, we were collecting metrics, logs, CPU utilization. But we also wanted to collect each of the calls from the custom functions. We used the Node.js agent. We also wanted end-to-end -end instrumentation on the mobile app. So we used the Kotlin agent. And lastly, perhaps most importantly, synthetics allowed us to benchmark that performance benefit to say, what were we getting that we couldn't have gotten before? And in sum, the results were astounding. 2x speed improvement for 99% of calls. We future-proofed their architecture. We created a more uniform low latency experience. We think that that's incredibly powerful. But yet, we think that the stat right here transcends basic arithmetic. Because you know what? We think that Verizon and New Relic together are ushering in a totally new generation of mobile application experiences. And before I turn it over to Bill, I want to close with a few points here. First and foremost, we think that Verizon 5G Edge with HarperDB and New Relic together really showcases that the network can become an asset to application builders. It's not just the compute anymore. Secondarily, you can build a really performant experience, but if you can't measure it across the entirety of your stack each and every step of the way, then you're missing that core capability. And New Relic is able to provide that for any customer looking to leverage the mobile edge. So more broadly, I hope this showcases a great example of what Verizon and New Relic can do together. And stay tuned for this summer, where you can get hands-on building with this technology. Thanks so much, and I'll turn it over to Bill. Wow, another incredible example of a world-class brand and the power of telemetry data used in an entirely maybe different way than we've seen before, only possible with the New Relic's hyperscale data platform. Let's keep this uh, train moving, right? Maybe another great brand, Foot Locker, and uh, a story about how they've been able to take advantage of New Relic's full platform. I want to introduce Satya and from Foot Locker and Nada from our customer adoption team to tell that story. Over to you guys. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? I'm super excited to be here with all of you to be able to talk about a couple of different ways that we can help you accelerate your observability journey. And to start with, I'm pleased to have Satya here on the stage with, with me to tell us how he was able to take Foot Locker from application monitoring to consolidating multiple tools that they had in place, all with an objective of optimizing the performance of their systems and their stack. Sure. Satya, yeah. how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Good morning, OK, so. great. So you've been on this journey to reduce the tools problem at Foot Locker. So can you expand on your reasoning, and what did you do? Sure, yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the challenge was, uh, like, for local areas, uh, globally operations, we have around 2,700 stores, and we have seven uh, different banners, which are website, and we have 
seven iOS and seven uh, Android mobile applications, which we use to uh, sell our product. So uh, with all these uh, different you know, uh, sources, uh, it was very hard for us to you know, uh, operationally maintain, um, but uh, luckily we started using uh, you know, uh, Neuralink as an APM tool we started in 2020. And um, gradually we believe that you know, uh, it has potential to bring all different metrics which we are looking for, like our mobile apps, our browser, our infrastructure, our our you know uh, on-prem uh, data. So all those things uh, we brought together, put it into Neuralink on a center platform where you know uh, all the developers, our operations engineers, or you know in, in fact infrastructure engineers across all the globes we had, they can access the same data, they can troubleshoot the issues. So and yeah. So wow, twenty-seven thousand stores. That that that's a lot, uh, and I can imagine with tool fragmentation, it's, it's very common. We hear that from, from many of our customers. They, they tell us that they have anything from like half a dozen to perhaps in some cases a, even a dozen and a half of different tools uh, in place, right? So then that tool fragmentation leads to data fragmentation and team fragmentation as you have heard today. So um, with your tool consolidation, what, what outcomes have you been able to achieve? Sure. Um... The outcome, uh, like as we envisioned, like two years back, to put the data into the central platform, like Neuralink, so that you know uh, we can deliver world class experience to our customers, like using our website in real time. We use uh, uh, browser monitoring. We use synthetics to uh, make sure that all our web services are up running. We use uh, you know uh, all different uh, uh, features of Neuralink as of today, and uh, make sure that. Our infrastructure is up, and operationally, uh, it's quick and easier to troubleshoot the issues. So, kind of, um, you know, everybody, it's a win-win situation for all of us, for uh, our team members, or <laughs> all different team members. Yeah. That is uh, really great. So, basically, you've been able to uh, accelerate how quickly you can remedi remediate the issues, and you've been able to increase the productivity of your developers by basically providing them a single source of truth. Right. And I think you, you shared that you also added infrastructure monitoring to all of your on-prem as well as cloud resources. Uh, can you tell us a little more about how that reduced your overall risk? Sure. Uh, yeah, we are still in hybrid uh, infrastructure, so uh, most of our uh, you know, applications are still in on-prem, and then we are still in migration phase, moving out to public cloud. And uh, with that, uh, like, you know, uh, when you have dependent services in different, uh, you know, some are in public cloud, some are in on-prem, uh, it was hard to uh, get the issues so quickly and faster. Like, you know, if I'll talk, for an example, uh, our inventory, right? So uh, we hit same services uh, if you're using our uh, website or our mobile or in-store, it all goes to the same services. So if it is on on-prem and you know our applications are deployed in public it was hard to uh, for engineers to uh, troubleshoot those sort of issues so using neuralink at least you know uh, we have improved the productivity of our developers they can directly get access to our all metrics different metrics and recently we migrated logs as well so yeah uh, right well thank you satya for sharing your story uh, it's been really very insightful. Thank you. And I have a breakout session today at 2.30 p.m. to talk more about uh, how much tool we reduced and what all data we are using. So I would love to see you there, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> Isn't that a great tool consolidation story? Now, as a leader in our customer adoption organization, we understand that your success is not only about having great products and great technology. We understand that it is about enabling you to unlock the power of observability in service of your business needs and your customers. So just like what we did with Foot Lockers, uh, I want to talk today about our commitment to help each and every one of you adopt observability so that you can be even more successful 
at what you do. Look, we understand that the optimization of a, a performance of your system and stack is fundamentally a really, really challenging problem. A problem that requires combination of the right tools and people with the right skill set, and then a framework for success. Now, good news is that at New Relic, we have collectively decades of experience in monitoring and observability. And so we are here to help you on that path and help you understand how you can optimize the performance of your applications, of your services, of your infrastructure, network, front-end performance, really all with a single goal to ensure that you can triage, mitigate, and find your issues as fast as possible. And better yet, we really want to make sure that we help you prevent those issues from ever happening again. Now, what we also have done, um, we have leveraged that expertise to create um, that framework for success that I talked about. We're calling it observability maturity framework. And now we want our experts to leverage that framework to work with you to build observability-focused customer value plan for each and every one of you. Now, how can you help us do this? Talk to us. Share with us your business objectives, your initiatives that you're focusing on. Tell us how are you going to measure success so that our observability experts can identify just the right work streams that you need in order to be able to execute on that plan and make sure that you're successful. Those work streams are things like onboarding you on the right parts of our platform, alert quality management, service quality management, uh, data ingest optimization. You know what is the best part of all of that, which I haven't shared with you yet? That this is all free for all of our customers. This is free for all of our customers that are on pro and enterprise plan. And the real reason is that we want to make sure that your investment in New Relic, your investment in observability can, we want to make sure that it's as successful as it possibly can be. Now, you may say, well, I prefer to do this on my own. Or you may be a customer that is not on a pro or enterprise plan. What we have done, we have put our observability uh, maturity framework out there. It you can be found in our docs, so you can do this on your own. Okay. Next part that I wanted to talk about that I'm very excited about. In order to support all of what I've just talked about, New Relic will be doubling the size of our customer-facing observability experts. Those are solution consultants and technical account managers that work with many of you already, each and every day. As I already mentioned, collectively we have decades of experience in observability and monitoring, and so we want to make sure that we help you optimize the performance of your systems and your stack. We also have a lot of experience across different industries. You have already heard a couple of customers here from different industries today. So we have a lot of experience in media and entertainment, telecommunications, retail, um, financial services, you name it, right? Equally important, our observability experts have seen about every technology stack out there imaginable. So whether you're looking to monitor on-prem, monolith, or perhaps you're moving to the cloud, or maybe you are cloud native, you have experts dedicated to you who have seen it all and are committed to your help. Now, 
We have also expanded our network of partners this year. Some of you may come and say, look, I already have a trusted partner who I prefer to work with. So we wanted to make sure that they are uh, trained and uh, also enabled and certified uh, that they know the best practices as, and that they have the exact same skill set like our observability uh, experts. So we are all jointly committed to your success. At the end of the day, New Relic is successful when you're successful. So here at FutureStack today, I really hope, first of all, go out there, have fun. Three things that I would like to wrap up with. Go connect with your account team. Connect with your solution consultant, your technical account managers. Talk to them about building a customer value plan for your organization. Next, go and check out our observability at scale tra talk track. We will be talking about specific best practices on how to drive uh, observability maturity of your organization. And last, connect and learn from each other, okay? We have many, many customers here. You guys are at different phases of observability maturity. And I know many of you would be really, really excited and happy to share the lessons they've learned on their journey. With that, I'd like to welcome Bill back to stage. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I really invite you to take advantage of the offer from Not On Team. It's a fantastic customer adoption organization. And uh, I, often, I often talk to them about, for every dollar our customers spend, I want them to know how they're saving many dollars uh, in cost or making many more dollars in revenue for their company. So take the team up on that. Create those value plan so that you have the data and information you need to champion New Relic inside your organization and continue the partnership with us. One more thing, we've talked about dev and ops, dev, ops, dev, ops, all day long. And there's been um, a really common refrain in questions since I joined the company two years ago. Everyone says dev, ops, dev, ops is great, but Bill, When's New Relic going to do something about security? My answer has been, not yet. Uh, we have our hands full with the transformation that we've been doing the last two years to bring you the world's best observability platform. But I'm really excited for today, because today we're ready to talk, talk about security. We wanted to make sure we've got a strategy that serves you well and that really differentiates us from other solutions that are out there on the market. I'm really excited to introduce this to you. So let me actually just bring the man behind the strategy, Jonathan. Jonathan, come up on stage. Thanks, man. Thanks, Bill. Hey, everyone. I'm Jonathan. Uh, I am the, I don't know, I'm the security product innovation lead, they told me my title was. Um, but I'm still an engineer. I uh, actually manage an engineering team, I do product management work, and I'm on call. So uh, I can empathize with your lives. Who's excited about this? Okay. Yeah? Yeah? Awesome. So am I. Um, you know, I think today has proven nothing if it hasn't proven that software is complex and that it's really a broad team company-wide effort to deliver great software and great user experiences. And so let's talk about building and operating secure software because high quality, reliable software has to be secure. You've heard a lot about silos today and breaking apart silos. Well, vulnerability management is fraught with silos, right? It is a massive and growing challenge. Our applications are built by multiple teams and access dozens of APIs, third-party services, open source, cloud infrastructure, the list goes on and on. It's a full stack, full lifecycle problem that really demands attention from multiple orgs in our, in our organizations and in our companies. Right? And it's not just about open source CVEs, though that's all the rage. 
you need a bunch of different tools which are often siloed and demand experts to interpret what's going on in them. So with all of that noise, how do you get your autonomous DevOps teams who are trying to innovate and ship quickly to understand their most important security priorities? The truth is that we need DevSecOps to work, right? Without DevSecOps, we can't accomplish this goal. We need our application teams to understand, prioritize, and fix their individually most critical risks to our businesses. And to do that, they need a lot of fluency. They need to eliminate delays and confusion and rework. So what if you could unify all of the vulnerability signals coming from all of the different tools that you use already or that you might want to use in the future? And use observability context and New Relic's uh, entity graph to really understand the risk from these different vulnerabilities. This is why we've been rethinking DevSecOps from the ground up through an observability lens and it, to create our brand new vulnerability management offering. We're not just recreating the tools that you already use. We are, in fact, using telemetry you're already collecting to detect vulnerabilities. We are also embracing an ecosystem of tools out there so that you can work with the existing tools you know and you trust, bring all of the information together in one place. Because full stack, full life cycle security is not something you accomplish alone. We're gonna integrate with your tool chain and are investing in a true first class partnership ecosystem for this. So with that, I could talk forever, but to really get the point, I'm very excited to show you New Relic vulnerability management. So let's go to a demo. Welcome to your vulnerability management dashboard. I mean, it's not yours. It's, it's not real, but it's a real product. <laughs> Delivering healthy and secure software is a team sport, as I said, right? How do you know if a DevSecOps process is actually working? How do you know if you're staying ahead of the critical and, and high severity issues being detected across your whole stack, across your whole software lifecycle, and keeping those issues from getting worse and letting them sit there for months and months without attention? How do you know if the entities impacted by these vulnerabilities are publicly exposed to the internet or are a little more secure because they're internal tools that have a lower risk profile? And how do you know if you have the right kinds of tools in place and that you're bringing data from all of these tools together into one point so that you can see, yes, we have source code scanning, yes, we have container scanning, yes, we are doing third-party vulnerability assessment before we deploy to production. Oh, and in production, are we really keeping track of all of our cloud resources, all of our software, all of our infrastructure? We'll help you map that out and make sure you've got the coverage and make sure that the data from all of those sources keeps flowing into your system of truth so everyone knows what's going on for real. And if you don't have those tools integrated, our IO Quick Starts can help light them up in a matter of minutes. And if you don't have those tools and you're thinking about looking for them, we have a whole marketplace of partnerships that you can look at and request new ones. So for me as an, a leader, this is amazing. I can really see very quickly what is going on across my entire organization in one place. And I can filter this down to look at team by team. How are they doing? How are we keeping up? Are our metrics good? But what about engineers, right? If I am an individual engineer, I just care about the things I can actually change my own portfolio of services or infrastructure or whatever it is I do. So now in New Relic, for any entity, a service, a host, a cloud resource, I can just click on the vulnerabilities tab. And I get a targeted list of all of the known vulnerabilities that affect this entity. And that's coming from New Relic detected data as well as these third parties that I've integrated. It's a fantastic way to get all of the right information in front of the right engineers who are able to actually make a change for the better. We've talked about how observability is for all engineers. And that means all, including security and interested engineers, security focused engineers. What about the security engineering team 
or the architects and SREs whose mandate is to make sure we're keeping track of security and we're staying on top of our vulnerabilities. This is why you've seen the errors inbox today. People love it. Teams are using this all over the place. You should absolutely go check it out. And so we're just adding to this. We're adding a vulnerability inbox side by side. And here, as a security-focused engineer, if my job is to make sure that as an org we're staying on top of the new issues and they're getting triaged correctly, I've got one place to go. I can see all of the issues from all of the different tools in this single place. It's fantastic. We have a bunch of filtering options so that you can do things like just a quick action, like I'm just here to triage the new stuff, show me the most risky things, show me the issues that have been assigned out to teams but not yet completed, or show me the issues that someone marked as ignored, right? We're going to accept the business risk and not fix this. It's great to be able to go back and audit that and see who made those decisions and why. We also show you whether the entities impacted by these vulnerabilities are exposed to the public internet. Thankfully, none are in this case. And also whether these vulnerabilities are detected upstream in source control or in a CI system. So you can focus on these blue check marks and say, let me fix those before the next deploy. I won't make things worse in production. And then I can click on any of these vulnerabilities and get the full list of details coming from the actual tool that scanned and detected it in the first place. If it's something like a library or a package dependency, we'll tell you what version is safe to upgrade to to fix this issue. And I can see all of the entities in one place that are impacted by this. If I'm using CodeStream and if this is a source code issue or a package management issue, I can, with one click, pop open code stream to load the right repo, make the change right there, and get it into a PR so that I don't have to even create a ticket for this. One more thing I can do from this page is manage assignment. With a single click, I can assign this to another New Relic user for follow-up. I can mark the status as assigned or mitigated. And using our ticketing integration, I can create a ticket in the right team's backlog so that this just gets into their backlog, it gets prioritized, and they get it fixed at the right time. So again, this is you know, for someone who really cares about and is responsible for, are we doing well at security? Across my whole org, my whole group, you know, everything you know about New Relic, all of the data being facetable and filterable and queryable, is true for the security data as well, from both New Relic and third-party products. So there's one final thing I want to show you. Um, I bet, like me, you're sick of hearing marketing messages about Log4Shell and Log4J, and you probably, well, I certainly live in fear of the next vulnerability dropping that causes our entire org to spin up a response. I don't want that to happen, but it does. It's going to happen, right? Vulnerabilities are not going away. And so what we've done, the next time you need to know about that, when you say, gosh, where are we using this library? Do we use it at all? What versions are we on? Where is it actually deployed in production? Just head to our library explorer. This is taking your existing APM and infrastructure telemetry, looking at the manifests of packages and libraries that are in use by those services and on that infra, and giving you a cross-cut view of exactly where it's deployed across the entire system. So with one look, I can see, for any given library, how many of those versions of that library do we have deployed? Where are they? Are there critical CVEs in them or not? And how many entities are consuming that resource or that library? So the next time you get a phone call or an email or a tweet that says, hey, are we exposed to this new issue? You'll be able to just type in the CVE number and let New Relic do the work. There we go. So what we've done here is we've taken the CVE number, we've gone to the intelligence database, looked up the actual vulnerability, figured out if there are versions that are safe to upgrade to or not, figured out what library it's, it's in, and then looked through your entire production and pre-production system to see are we using that library? And are the versions we're using exposed to this CVE? From here, I can simply click on the library name and get a deep analysis of exactly what versions we're using and where they're deployed. 
and what the, all of the CVEs for the versions of those libraries we're using are. This is amazingly powerful. This literally takes weeks of time if you don't have this kind of vulnerability observability. And with New Relic, you'll be able to do this in a matter of a few seconds. This is DevSecOps, the new DevSecOps. We've rethought DevSecOps through an observability lens. Other vendors would say, hey, come buy our security products and we'll give you a great integrated experience. But the truth is that no single vendor can solve your security coverage problem. New Relic is the only observability platform that allows customers to easily integrate existing security data from this whole ecosystem of tools, which gives you the actionable data you need, you all need in one place and puts it into context so you can take quick action and you get rid of delays and it's just so much better. This is amazing. I am so excited about this. I hope you are too. So, Head to newrelic.com and sign up for the early access. I believe it's called sign up for beta on the website. And uh, tomorrow afternoon at about 2.15, Kimberly Price, New Relic Senior Director of Application Security, and I will be having a fireside chat to talk about the modern software development life cycle and the secure development life cycle and how we make it work at New Relic. As I said, securing modern software isn't something you do alone. Lacework is a valued New Relic partner. So please join me in welcoming Ufar, Lacework's chief architect, to the stage. He's gonna talk more about modern app security and how security and observability work together for the best results. Hey, thanks. Thanks, John. Uh, Thanks, everybody, uh, for letting me be here. Uh, so Lacework, like New Relic, really believes that cloud security is a data problem. So the cloud, when it arrived, offered us these infinite possibilities. Everything was going to be so agile. We're going to be elastic. We could take our existing operations and run them at Google scale 24-7. Uh, and in fact, many of those things are true. But at the same time, everything is changing all the time. Everything is agile and elastic. Your developers, the cloud environments, there is this constant churn. So operating in the cloud is really complex, in complex in ways that really did not apply to previous business computing. And this certainly is true for securing the cloud. So how do we even know what's going on in an environment where nothing stays the same from day to day? Well, we got to know. we got to have visibility. Each and every one of you is not using all of those 2,000 new features that AWS is launching every year, the, one of those 1,000 new features that GCP is launching. You're using a subset. You have to actually know which subset am I using, where is that subset, how is it configured, and how is that exposed to the Internet, to our, my critical databases, and so on. Where is my risk? But that's not enough. Knowledge of what is there right now is not enough. You also have to have insights. Where are things changing unexpectedly? What are the security critical configuration changes that are happening? What are the security critical software and code updates that are happening? Back to vulnerability, which John was talking about. And then you have to have some way of taking action and remediating and fixing those issues. Now, we could go and, and try to solve this with you know, our traditional security approaches. The stuff that we all know from the you know, last 20 to 40 years of business computing. We could build out our SOC. We could look at indicators of compromise. We could watch the data carefully. But we know that that's actually not going to work. That may have worked in an environment where a client-server implementation took Uh, two years to roll out, where there was time for those two different teams to actually have a long-term dialogue. 
but that's actually not working in the cloud. There is fortunately a better way, a data-driven way, which Lacework and New Relic both agree is the right way to do things. And in this new way, we actually focus on you, your operations, your data, how you are actually using the cloud. And we learn what's normal in your environment. It's behavior-based in that we're looking at how are you behaving in this steady, stable state. By knowing your architecture, how you've set up your databases, how you've set up your middleware and your uh, load balancers and so on, we will know when things are changing in an unexpected way. When that particular front-end server is all of a sudden starting to talk to a new external IP address, as happened with Log4J, Log4Shell, and we'll be able to say that's totally not normal, never happened before. We're using the data, not just watching the data. And we know we have lots of data because all of you are running at scales which are just phenomenal. Nothing happens just once anymore in the cloud. It's happening on thousands of containers, tens of thousands of hosts. Using that volume of the data and intelligence, we can give you the right alert at the right time. Now, New Relic and, and Lacework, we both really believe in this approach. We believe that you should be able to see all of your resources, whatever clouds they're in. We believe that you should be able to correlate risk from what's actually happening at runtime, whether that Java service actually has some classes for log4j and so on, how that relates to what was written by the developers, where the image came from, and did the image actually not contain those log4j classes? Maybe they were actually downloaded dynamically. We want you to know that, and we want that to be at the tips of your fingertips. And we want you to understand all of the connections between the entities, uh, between the host, the containers, and so on. How is your architecture actually structured? If you have a Perl script that's running every minute in tens of thousands of containers and it's doing the same thing, we want you to understand that as a single entity. And if one of those starts behaving badly because of an exploit or because of a problem, then that should be highlighted. And finally, although I'm talking about security, Mostly, you're not worried about the hackers. If you're running in the cloud, fat fingering, mistakenly rolling out something that actually should not have been rolled out because it wasn't tested enough, that is the fear at the pit of the stomach of every single DevOps person I've ever worked with. You're operating in the cloud, you're operating at scale, making that mistakes that takes your operation down that is the real security risk from the DevOps point of view. While actually understanding what's normal, tracking those config changes, seeing their effects, is going to give you a huge step up. Now security is coming to you and saying, hey, well, you saw this unexpected change. Is this normal? And you can go, oh, man, I didn't realize that would happen. So New Relic, Lacework, one and one. We know that. The sum is greater than the part. So one and one together is three, at least in binary. And that's what we want to bring to you. We want to bring you an unparalleled view into your DevOps and your security stance using data. Now, please visit Lacework in the, in the flow area. We have a booth, and we can tell you more about our polygraph uh, data platform. And then there are talks by Aaron, who's going to tell you about how West Virginia is tied to DevOps, and by Adam Larson, uh, who is formerly at, at New Relic, and he's going to talk about whether we ever have a DevSecOps healthy uh, ecosystem. So uh, with that, thank you, and I'm going to welcome Peter back to the stage. Thank you, Olivar. What an incredible security demo. I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you, Lacework, for coming here to present. Software is the most creative, powerful medium of our time. And building great software has never been more complex. At New Relic, we understand that complexity. You've seen today how we bring all the data you need together 
to help you understand this increasingly complex landscape, to act on it with data-driven insights on our incredibly powerful platform. In fact, some customers, not naming names, have told us that our platform is so powerful that it's sometimes a little tricky to navigate or even understand. And it's true. I agree with you. So we're going to make it simpler, more customizable, and more collaborative. So I'd like to show you, our most important customers, a sneak peek of the next version of New Relic and invite you to join us in shaping the future of our developer platform. Let's take a look. All right, so you can see right away, we've got a super familiar, easy to understand left rail navigation. That makes it super easy to navigate through the system and always understand where you are. Well, what's really great about this approach, because it's so familiar, it also gives you up the opportunity to make your data the hero by tucking away the sidebar and giving your important data more real estate. I really love this mode of navigation because it still allows me to see what everything is, and yet I've got more room. In addition to this new navigation on the left, we've also organized all the capabilities in New Relic together on our All Capabilities page, so you can easily see all the different things that New Relic has to offer. And because we're a platform, you can even create your own new capabilities, which will be listed for everybody in your organization. It's super easy to get started, and you can add this to your New Relic account. Now, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to look at our new service levels capability. I love this, it's amazing. And so I always find myself navigating to this page. And I can get there from all capabilities, that's pretty easy. But since I go there so often, wouldn't it be great if I could just make this part of my nav? So there it is. Now it's just one click away. And even better, like, let's say I'm not really a mobile dev, so I don't really pay too much attention to what's happening there in my company. So I can clean up my interface and unpin the items that I don't use as often. Now, what's important here to recognize is that you can think of the left rail as just the shortcuts to those applications you use the most, but all of those capabilities are always gonna be available to you on this All Capabilities page. All right, next we're gonna look at how we've improved the add data experience, so I'll click here. And what we've done here is simplified all the different ways that you can get started with New Relic. Between our add data experience, our IO quick starts, we've created one unified experience that helps you get started more easily. So as you can see here, there are 674 quick starts that are available. And just like our capabilities page, this is an extensible platform with open source solutions that you can contribute to. So if you wanna create your own way of onboarding some of your developers within your organization, you can do that and add it to this catalog. In this example, I'll show you how easy it is to get started instrumenting a Kubernetes cluster. And if you haven't done this recently, you'll love our improved simplified experience. So I'll open this up. All I have to do is pick a name for my cluster, and then I can make several selections, such as if I want to scrape all my Prometheus endpoints or gather log data, I can set that up with just a couple of clicks. And once I go through there, it gives me exactly the right command that I can copy and paste into a terminal and get started. So it's that easy. Now, now we said that we wanted to make it simpler, we wanted to make it more personalized, and we also make New Relic more collaborative. Now, let me show you how we make it more collaborative. On every page of New Relic, we're adding a new collaboration capability that we call discussions. 
So I can pop this frame open and discuss any page within the service. So you hear we're looking at some log data and some of my teammates are going back and forth discussing what they're looking at. And what's great about this is you can have the discussion right alongside the data. So everybody's gonna know exactly what you're talking about. You can even capture screenshots and share them. Because most of our customers tell us what they do in this scenario is they're gonna take a screenshot of their entire New Relic screen and then go paste it over in Slack. Well, this improves upon that in two ways. Number one, it does sync to Slack, sync to Slack, and it does sync to Microsoft Teams. So now you'll be able to leverage your existing communication tools and share to any channel you want, but you can also see it within New Relic. So let's take a look at what it looks like over in Slack. You can see here that this post has been shared along with a screenshot, and my teammates can either reply directly in Slack or they can click this link to open it up back in New Relic and join me here. So this is great because there's only one conversation thread and it appears in both places totally synced. And the second improvement, <laughs> the second improvement is that unlike Slack, we've all used it, right? Those conversation threads will flow by and you'll never see them again. What's great about this is we're giving you a home for all of your conversations. So if we're talking about logs on this log page, you'll still see that thread. And we're even giving you an overview of all the discussions that are happening across all the different pages on New Relic so you can capture all of that institutional knowledge. And this is great, especially for new engineers on your team so that they can get started and come up to speed about how you're using New Relic. So we're super excited about these new capabilities. All right, so what are we doing? We're making it easier for you by making New Relic a simpler interface. And that simpler interface, you're gonna love your out of the box experience. It's so much easier to get started, to get to your data more quickly and address your critical needs. We're making it more personalized, so you can customize your user interface, whatever your job function or stack, tech stack. And we're making New Relic more collaborative. As you heard John say, software development is a team sport, and our new discussions feature are available on every page of New Relic. They automatically sync to Slack and Microsoft Teams, and they capture your institutional knowledge. So when a service fails, you'll very easily be able to see what you did last time to fix it. So we love this new interface, but it's more important that you all love it too. So we're asking you to participate, if you'd like, to give us some feedback. And so the way you can do that is go to the New Relic website and click on your headshot in the upper right-hand corner. And when you do, We'll let you know in the coming days when we can turn it on for your account. We're really looking forward to getting all of your feedback on this simplified interface to make New Relic faster, easier to use, and more productive for every member of your team. Thank you very much. And now, back over to Bill to bring us home. Great job. Isn't that exciting? Oh, we started the day talking about the magic of telemetry data. Can you see it shining through? Developers, operations, security, experiences that span engineering teams and bring new innovation to help you run your business. We uh, have delivered so much innovation this year. I, I am just blown away by the creativity and the hard work of our product team. And today, we introduced even more new things for you to start engaging with and trying out. And you'll learn about things that we couldn't fit into the keynote as you make your way around the breakout session. So strongly encourage you to do that uh, throughout today and tomorrow. I want to close with maybe something that's less exciting now that we've got all of that cool technology and innovation out of the way. But it's an important reality that we all have to deal with, which is the cost of observability. I uh, can honestly say that when we thought about how to price our platform, we put you at the center. 
We wanted to come up with a pricing model that solved a number of different problems. We wanted it to be simpler, easier to understand and budget for. We wanted it to be more predictable. And we chose intentionally this user and data pricing model to pay that off for you, to, to bring those simplicity and predictability characteristics to your observability cost. We chose the user-based pricing because it's easy to understand how many engineers are in your company that need access to New Relic. And ultimately, uh, we want to bring that value to every one of your engineers, as we've been talking about today. We also chose the data uh, price meter because data is where a lot of the cost is. We wanted to contain that cost, limit the expense of your data, to allow you to instrument more of your systems and get the value of that data in front of every one of your engineers. So why is this platform pricing better? We believe it's better for a number of reasons. First, you only pay for those users once. You may wonder, like, wait, Bill, no other observability vendor charges for users, so what are you talking about? I'll submit to you they do charge you for access to the data. They just bake it into the data charge. With New Relic, we keep the data price low so you can instrument everywhere and charge you once so every full user has access to all of the data, all of the telemetry about their project and all of the dependencies around it. The reason that you can see that show up is in our low incremental data costs. We charge by gigabytes, so maybe if you're using other tools that charge by the host or uh, charge in other meters, it might be hard to do that translation. So let me show you. Our effective incremental host cost is around $4 per host, compared to others who charge four or five times that amount. That means you can instrument four or five times more of your infrastructure or collect double the number of logs and still save money with New Relic. Last, I'll uh, invite you to make sure you read the fine print. Some of our competitors have incredible uh, 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 stipulations around how they charge you for data. For example, some competitors charge you at the 99th percentile. That means if you have a huge uh, sale moment on one day of the month and you ramp up your infrastructure by 10x, you're going to be paying for the entire month at the 99th percentile. And not only that, but they'll charge you above contracted rates for that extra capacity. At New Relic, we're auto-scale friendly. You only pay for the data you send us. So you scale up your infrastructure, you pay for that additional telemetry. The minute you scale it down, you're back and saving money. Those are real value savings we're passing along to you. For two years now, since we introduced the 25 cents per gigabyte model, we have been cranking out innovation around the data platform to make it the world's leading telemetry data platform. You can see the list of more than 30 updates that we've delivered for you over those past few years. In the spirit of transparency, I wanted to remind you of the announcement we made a few weeks ago which is we are increasing the price of our standard data plan to now 30 cents per gigabyte starting June 1st. Of course, many of you are under contract with New Relic, and uh, the price that we have you know, agreed upon for the duration of the contract will remain. And then as you go up for the renewal conversation, uh, we, we can have that conversation around the renewed rate. But remember, the effective incremental cost per host and gigabyte is still significantly less, even with this uh, price increase. In addition, in response to many of your demand, we have added multiple capabilities, which originally were, per were available for purchase a la carte, and we're now bundling those together at a discounted rate with a new Data Plus offering. So if you're looking for uh, capabilities like higher query limits, long-running queries, streaming export, uh, historical export, et cetera, you can now get those at a 50 cent per gigabyte rate with additional headroom and retention limits on all of your data. That's also available, the Data Plus plan, June 1st. 
Now, I've talked before about the value plans and how we want to partner with you to make sure that for every dollar you spend, you're saving money. I want to make you an incredible, I think, one-time offer. As we've spoken with customers about the power of this platform and how we can help you to get all of your teams in one place to take advantage of it, uh, we've heard feedback that one of the challenges is there's a chicken and egg problem. You may have tools already in your teams, under contract, and it's hard to bring those engineers into New Relic One and start paying for them while you've got another contract with another provider. And yet if you don't bring them in, uh, how do they get ramped up and trained on New Relic in time um, before the contract ends? We want to solve that problem with you. So we are introducing a new observability for all incentive. This allows you to jointly work with us on a strategic plan to standardize on New Relic. We'll build with you that value plan, that implementation plan, that helps you consolidate tools. But we won't wait until your engineers are ready and able to move off. We'll, in, we'll unlock every one of the engineers in your organization from the start without any additional user cost. That allows us to work together on the implementation plan, get you ready to bring those engineers onto New Relic, again, without paying any additional user cost, and then as those contracts roll off and you're able to uh, begin paying for the users, you can begin at the negotiated rate. In that process, we can save you hard costs on budget, and we can bring to you increased productivity and greater engineering satisfaction by having your engineering teams in one place. And if at any point in time along that journey, it's just not working out for you, your engineers aren't satisfied, you can cancel at any time. If this is interesting to you, I uh, would invite you to email us, of Ali for all, that's O11 for all, at newrelic.com, and tell us that you're interested. We'll put you in touch with your uh, customer pod, that customer adoption team, and we'll begin that plan right away. With that, we are at the end of the FutureStack 2022 keynote. I want to wrap up by expressing again my gratitude for you traveling out today, all those who are able to join us in Vegas, and all of you who are streaming online. I hope the content was informative. I hope it leads to even better results for you and your teams. And thank you again for being a New Relic customer and partner. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. See you around.